to my grandpa, but... <laughs> anyway, let's thank you. All right, all right. Question here. Hello, my original question was for Jason. It's okay. Original question's out the window. Just ask the question. Either I'll answer it, he'll answer it, or, uh, or we'll just move on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right, what do you think John would feel about his son um, receiving the mark of Cain, and do you think he would have hunted him? Oh, yes. Good question. Um, I, I don't think John would have hunted him. Um, I think John's first loyalty always, after mom died, was to the boys. Um, I think he would have done everything in his power in the same way that, that, that Sam is trying to, um, to help get rid of the mark and uh, save his son. So I, I, I don't think he would have hunted him at all. No. Yeah, I mean, we, saw, we kind of saw that early on when that, you know, John was very willing to sacrifice himself for his, for his sons. And I think that he would, have, he would have gone and done something, anything to save his, he would have sacrificed himself in, in whatever way, shape, or form uh, to protect his, his children. And I think that that's, you know, we talked, we talked earlier about, you know, what, what kind of father was John really? And, and I think that, you know, this taps into that a little bit in the fact that he, he would have sacrificed himself completely and wholeheartedly to save his sons. And so, yes, it wasn't the perfect father son you know relationship it wasn't the perfect childhood for these two guys but there was a father that protected them and that loved them and that taught them how to survive and i think that's you know that that was some of his greatest assets as a father so thank you, thank you. Hi. hi so throughout the season we got to see many different sides of things uh we see uh, we see him going from bed because of marcus being inside of him and then he just regular nice thing. So what is the process that goes into sh changing from regular Dean to Demon Dean and is that change hard from the acting and direct directing perspective? Uh, I'll, I'll answer a little bit of that. Uh, you know, I would say yes, anytime you alter the character, uh, you know, considerably, it's, you're taking on a challenge. Um, especially when that character is still within this new uh, alteration. Um, and so the fact that Demon Dean was not a demon that was possessing Dean, the fact that it was actually Dean and his soul had been twisted, so there, there needed to be a flavor of real Dean, plus what also this kind of this demon version of it. And that, and that was tricky uh, from an acting standpoint. Um, and yeah, I would say it's it's difficult, but it's the it's the challenge that I mean that's what we do. That's that's why that's why they hired us in the beginning. It's because that's that's the that's the trade that we are craftsmen in, and, and I think that that's um, you know that's that's the challenge that we like to take on. So from a directing. Standpoint. You know what strikes me just now? Um, I was just reflecting on last year, I, I believe it was last year, during a panel together, you and I, think I, I think we were dry humping the chairs and doing a disco dance-off, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what he's talking um, about, Bob. I, I'm noticing that the tenor changes a little bit around Bob. We're like, we're answering the question seriously. And, talking about on the craft, which is it's a refreshing reprieve from our normal antics. I like it. He's not lying. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, guy. Um, from a um, producing, directing point of view... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just doing a single here. <laughs> uh, from a producing directing point of view, uh, this is what we feel, and we did this with Misha, I can't remember what year, but we did a, an episode that went into the future, and Misha basically became Timothy Leary, I don't know if you guys remember who that was, but um, we don't feel um, that uh, we can stretch these, these guys enough, there's nothing that we can write in a character, uh, by the way, Eugenie, stand up, please. This is Eugenie Ross Lemming, one of our co-executive producers. And one of our brilliant writers. Right here.
also also the better half to this one. Um, so we have such confidence in these guys, and you know, and that had to grow over time. But we knew really early on that there was very little acting challenges that we uh, couldn't give them that they wouldn't couldn't step up to the plate. Um, you know, and I, and I think that both uh, Misha and Jensen and, and Jared, the two guys not here, but um, they actually like those challenges. I think if you're on a show for 10 years and you're just doing the same stuff over and over again, uh, I think actors are going to start phoning it in. So the more we can challenge them, the, the, the more engaged they stay. Um, so it's, a, um, it, it's kind of a mutual give and take. As far as the directing goes, directing both of these guys is, uh, is just a pleasure. They come ready to play, they, they have an idea what they want to do in the scene, and if I have a suggestion, um, they're generally open to that and we'll try, you know, we, we, we have a lot of fun playing around with these scenes, so, uh, yeah, they're, they're a joy to work with and, and I don't think uh, the writers for a, for a moment say, well, nah, that, that might push them too much. There, there is no limit with either one of them. Thank you. Have you have you shown your your Bob directing impersonation? Oh, you guys have seen me do Bob, right? You've seen me do the the, the, the Bob coming on stage and giving like I mean the the the, 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 word, the choice of words. Okay, here I'll, I'll be Jensen and, and you be Bob. Okay, but it's really it's tough because I got to come up with the choice the right I'll be words. Good. The right words that, that, that Bob uses, uh, okay. because they're they're thought out and they're 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 really particular. Uh, and what they do is, and this is from any really really great director, is they know just the right thing to say <laughs> that can pull that performance out of an actor. And when you have somebody that knows those words, it's it makes my job as an actor that much more simpler. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a chance and do it a little bit from a scene where the... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Sammy, I love you like a brother. <laughs> and then we hear, cut! So then, he, so then I do the scene, right? I Sammy, do. I love you like a brother! <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I gave Bob the John Wayne walk. <laughs> He doesn't walk like that. Another one of my most favorite Bobisms is he'll come on set. He'll come on set after we got a shot. He'll come on stage and uh, on the, onto the set. He's got you know a binder. Most directors have binders that they they have all of their notes and and Misha can he, he can relate to this because he's 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 directed as well. That the the only way to survive as a director on Supernatural, in my opinion, and I think Misha will agree with me, is to kill yourself doing homework and prep and if you don't show up to set with with everything well thought out and have a road map that is that anybody can read and, and just i mean and it shows in the margins of your script you will see copious notes and arrow and sets and, 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 and you know <laughs> graphs and, and pie charts and you know it, it's like and just pages and pages. My my binder is like this thick. When a, when a, the entire script is probably this thick. So it's just pages and pages of notes and, and diagrams and so much stuff. And you know, exhaust ourselves doing that. And, and and Bob comes on set with his his binder, you know, with all of his directing stuff in it. And and every now and again, I just kind of take a look down and see see what the master has written down. See if I can't maybe take a little. A little something from it, and and it'll be it'll be a script that is blank, <laughs> except for two words. 
close up. <laughs> That's it. I can't fit any more words onto the pages of my, and he just says, close up. I'm like, oh, that's really went to town on the homework on that one, didn't you, Bob? <laughs> and now it's become a thing. I can't wait to see how little he has written in his script, which just makes me feel like a complete putz because it's like he can just basically come on and shoot from the hip as though he's a sniper. Uh, and that's a testament to his experience, and, uh, but man, does, does that crack me up? <laughs> and, and he, he <laughs> I just, I just have to come over and look at the script and go, really? That's all you did? And he just folds over laughing. It's, it is, uh, it's a good bit. It's a good bit. Yeah. There's a, there is an occasional doodle. <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing. There might be something else on the page, and it's a doodle that he's done while in a production meeting. He's not listening. He's just drawing circles. Wouldn't it be nice if it was that easy? Yeah. Thir 33 of these I've done. 33 episodes of Supernatural. This man has, has capped in the show. Oh, yeah. Question for Bob. In, in respect of the French mistake, what do you think of the, the character's portrayal of you, and is it accurate? <laughs> um, that, was, that was an interesting, uh, you know, you're getting somebody to play you. Uh, I, had, I have to give that one to Eugenie. Eugenie and Brian Doyle Murray worked together years ago in Second City. Um, when she knew that this was going to happen, uh, she said, you should really get Brian. Um, we had dinner with Brian, and Brian was like trying to, you know, pick up stuff. I, I said, just be you, Brian. Uh, you know, you're, you're more interesting than I am. Um, and uh, he was great, so uh, I, I thank Eugenie for that, that, that really brilliant idea. Um, and I loved what he did. I mean, I mean, that's probably my favorite episode of, of, of 10 years. It's, it was, it, you know, and these guys were fantastic, and, and, and Misha being a total jerk. I mean, was... himself. You know, you himself. Know, you know what my favorite part of that episode was? Right after, after it aired, my manager at the time, um, this was one of the last convers professional conversations we had, um, <laughs> My manager called up and said, you know, it's so refreshing, it's so refreshing to finally get to see you just being you. <laughs> and I was like, you thought that was really me? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> He's not kidding, I think that was it. But yeah, that was. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I, I was in a restaurant, I was in a restaurant, uh, this was a couple of years ago, uh, and, I, and I hear, Jensen! And I just kind of, Bob? <laughs> and I turned around, it was, it was Brian Doyle Murray. And, and it, it was. I, I was shocked that he remembered me. I mean, it was, you know, he wasn't on that for, he was only on for a couple of days. And, and but you sure? Captain, how the hell are you? Ah, this is my wife. And it was, uh, Bob? <laughs> um, is that it? Do I have to go? Do they have to go? I have to go. Can they stay? They can stay. I have to go. You can do an awful lot of sign language with just one finger. That was very impressive. Yes, this is it. <laughs> she looks like me directing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was Bob directing me. <laughs> my, another one of my favorite. This is this is Bob. This is Bob's turn for the the, the pace. We we need to pick up the pace of the scene. Uh, a lot of times, there's a lot of dialogue. It tends to drag, and it, and it really, uh, when there's an ex exposition dialogue, you really got to burn through it. Otherwise, you just you know you, you lose interest in it. The so Bob just walks and says, "Like <laughs> that's it. Time to move. Time to go faster." Uh, guys, I'm going to leave you in very capable hands. Uh, Misha, everybody, Bob Singer. Love you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Weird to have the 
exit stage music cued when you're staying on stage. It's, a, it's awkward. I'm rarely on stage. I didn't know that was exit. Do we do we get that music? I think we will get something like that. I hope so. Are we gonna get something like that when it's time for us to leave? Great. Good talk. <laughs> Your turn. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you both for coming. Um, my question is. Um, uh, this year at uh, the PCA Awards, uh, you were nominated by writing, by typing, you were at first uh, as a nominee, and then you were the winner. So how, are, how do you feel about that? And um, in the show, uh, at the scene, Crowley makes fun of PCA Awards, so how are you feeling about that? Well, People's Choice Awards. Um, I feel good about winning the People's Choice Award. Is that the right answer? I also, I think your, your timing on asking that question was impeccable, waiting until just after Jensen left the stage. Well played. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I loathe Crowley for de demeaning the PCAs in any way. Obviously, as you know, it's pretty much right up there with Oscar. Right? A PCA? Is it? Yes. No? It is. No? Oh. Thank you. Uh, how are the other actors' feelings about your win? <laughs> I think that they spend a lot of time consoling one another and crying. <laughs> you think? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So thank you. Yeah, hi. Um, so first of all, Misha, I want to thank you for being so involved with charity, especially with Gishwas and Landmarks, because I think what's important is that all of us in this room um, somehow come from a place of privilege. Like, what we're doing here just doesn't come naturally, it's not a right it's privilege and so what I wanted to ask you is what's your number one advice for fans or in general people who want to uh, found and start their own charity? Um, well I would uh, I would just say start small um, I don't think you need to found or start a charity necessarily because there's lots of great organizations that you can hit your wagon to um, and even very small contributions um, in aggregate can go a long way so Small acts can make a big difference. Thank That's you. It, yeah. Hello, my question is when um, Castiel put Sam out of hell, did you let his soul uh, on purpose? So, um, soulless Sam could walk for Castiel, or did Castiel really don't know that the soul was still in hell? You want to feel that one? <laughs> uh, uh, no, Castiel didn't know. He, uh, I, I think he says, and that guy that's a long time ago, but um, I, I think he has a, uh, a, a run of dialogue where he talks about how difficult it was and that you lost angels in the process of getting Sam out. I mean, it was a, a, a raid and, you know, like uh, the killing of Bin Laden, the way you go in and you do it and you get out. Uh, so, I don't, Castiel didn't know. I, I think uh, when he found out, he was probably a little disappointed, but um, no, he didn't know the result of that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask you another question? Is that right? You want to take I their time. It's kind of cutting in line, but... Um, yes, you can ask. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your charity. <laughs> um, so you're about to, you are both about to go back to the writer's room on, they start back in the writer's room on Tuesday. Um, how, how, what is it, what's the process when you get back into the room for the first time after uh, a hiatus? You have a very short hiatus of two weeks or something? No, generally it's no, not even here. that. No, I cheated this year and came here. Um, <laughs> well, we talk about, when, once we know what the, 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 uh, the end run of, the, of a, a season is and, and the cliffhanger that we've created, so, um, okay. and just so you know, we never know when we do these cliffhangers how we're going to get out of them. <laughs> you know, uh, people think, wow, there was a grand plan and then there was a three-year plan or... Not true. We, we write a cliffhanger and go, okay, now what? <laughs> so, after we write that, we, we start talking about different ways to uh, frame the next season. When we go to the writer's room now with, with, with all the writers, um, that, that's a smaller process, Jeremy, myself, or Eric and me. When, um, we, we, we've 
So, so the two, like you, like you and Jeremy, will sort of figure out how you're going to get out of the the cliffhanger and the big mythology. Yeah, in a general sense, just oh. sort of a general arc. Then when the writers come in uh, on Tuesday, I'm not sure how great Eugenie and I are going to be in their room after flying 14 hours, but we'll do our best. Uh, we tell the writers that this is our ideas in a, in a very general sense, and then the writers start to contribute story ideas, and we and we get into much more specifics, and that can take um, you know the better part of uh, two weeks to get kind of a solid at least first half of the season, um, and you know hopefully we get everybody excited about where where we ended up, and then each individual writer or writing team, in the case of uh, Eugenie and her partner Brad. Um, we'll go off, think about episodes, pitch those episodes, and it's sort of a fairly arduous process from idea to, to script. Excellent answer. <laughs> and a very good question, John. <laughs> hi. Yes, hi. Uh, so actually my question was connected to all three of you, but unfortunately Jensen left. Uh, so That's alright, I do a good impression of him. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so we already know that Jensen is going to direct next season. So uh, my question is to Robert: uh, Is Misha going to direct next season? <laughs> we have not discussed this question amongst ourselves. So, uh, my, yes, we are. But if you have an opportunity to discuss it, I don't know. <laughs> Who do you think about that? Uh, I think Misha would uh, certainly like to direct again. Uh, getting a directing slot is uh, difficult. Uh, I think he did a good job. He did a very good job. Uh, we have we have kind of a, a cue, uh, uh, if I if I'm not mistaken. So there's sort of a cue on the show, uh, and uh, and you get in line. And uh, when your ticket comes up, you you get to direct. Yeah. And um, is this queue alive? Like, has is, a lot of people? Is, this, this queue is, this is a long very queue. long. Yes. Yeah, it's everybody wants to direct. I, I I guess I understand that. I don't think everyone is equipped to direct. Um, you know, you never you never really know. But but we have a lot of people who want to. The studio also has a, a directing program in which when people get uh, graduate from this program they want to put them on Warner Brothers shows uh, so we have a, a certain obligation in that area to try new directors um, and it's as he said it's a queue and the, and the queue can get quite long but ha having said that you know Misha and I have not talked about this but I guess now we will <laughs> I wish you will thank you thank you for the question thank you for being here thank you thank you, thank you. Hello. Uh, so my question is for Misha, but the both of you can answer. Uh, <laughs> we saw the cast called The Bunker Home in the last, e the last episode. So when everyone, everything will settle down, do you think you will choose humanity and Team Free Will or Heaven? And how his, his idea of home has changed? You're right. Yeah, Castiel's. Castiel's idea of home. Yes. Um, I, I always think of Castiel as homeless. Uh, really, I, I mean, it, no, that's not a bad thing. I mean, not homeless in the sense that he is on the street and you know, can't afford a bed. I'm not that homeless, um, but uh, you know, his, his his idea of what he is supposed to do in the world, uh, you know, which can get confusing to him sometimes, is is really not to lay down roots. It's to it's to to go out, be helpful, you know, he'll tell you that his, you know, God's original mission was, you know, that the angels should help mankind. Um, so, uh, you know, that is a very charitable character. Um, he comes to the bunker, and he's very close to the boys, he loves the boys, um, but I don't think he would ever consider that place, or, or, or any place, necessarily home for him. He goes, he goes where he's needed. Um, so, I th does that answer your question? Sir? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Hello, uh, my question is more of a general one. Um, you make a lot of references in the show, and I just wanted to know if you ever had like movie or TV series evenings with like the whole crew where you watch what you're actually referencing. <laughs> and uh, a part question pertaining to that is, um, 
in the episode with us. Box, how did you know the story of Werther? 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 Werther. Werther. Okay. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, no, we don't really um, sit down together and, and, and watch movies, but one, one of the things that I think uh, really works for us is that the group of writers is quite diverse, so we, you know, my reference points may be entirely different from uh, Andrew Dabb's reference points, not, not like they are. Uh, you know, some of that is uh, just due to um, an age difference and also you know, what, what we like. Um, but references come up all the time in the room, you know, like this. I mean, even when we do seasons, we, we talk in terms of, of, of movies. This season is a you know, film noir season. Uh, this season is uh, the getaway, you know, and, and I think that helps the writers. Uh, but the fact that the, uh, the, the writing group is so diverse, that really gives everybody kind of, you know, we're not all cut out of the same uh, cloth. Um, so that, that seems to work for us. I mean, it's worked for 10 years of, of keeping this diversity, but in terms of a group getting together and saying we want to do this, I mean, everybody's pretty literate, so there's very few reference points that the people on the staff don't know, and if they don't, they'll just go out and get the movie or the TV show, and then they'll catch up with it. Is, is there a second part? Oh, the Werther box. Uh, yeah. Um, we, we have some really great people working in the office who do a lot of research for us, and, and they'll come up with, you know, facts like the, the Werther box, and then we, we'll build an episode around it. Um, or, or it's part of the knowledge that they themselves have, and they think, oh, this would be a good time to, to put this particular thing into play. Uh, but our, um, our research people are, are, are terrific, and, and we, we take pretty good care of all the mythology and not to, you know, one thing we're really proud of is that we don't, we don't turn our mythology on its head and, and, and really sort of say, oh, I know we did this three seasons ago, but th this will work now. We, we're pretty consistent and, you know, take a certain pride in that. Thank you. Hi. So, um, my question is, uh, uh, what gives you hope? <laughs> 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 That's such a narrow question. Um, I think um, for me there are a lot of things that give me hope, um, but uh, I'll speak specifically to the, my experience on Supernatural thus far. Um, seeing how this community coalesces to support one another is giving me a great deal more faith in humanity. Um, there is an enormous, there's an enormous support network that has evolved around this show, in the fandom of this show. I have met so many people who've come up to me and told me that in some way or another, this show or the community of people that they've met through this show has either saved their lives or stopped them from self-harm or given them renewed hope in some way and that is such such a phenomenal and totally unexpected outcome of this little monsters and demons sci-fi show i mean could you have ever imagined when you started this that and i, I this is not hyperbole there are dozens of lives that that have been saved, or at least individuals who feel that their lives have been saved 